Hello, hello, it's Joy Foster, founder of Tech Pixies, and I'm very excited today to be interviewing a pair of students, a mother-daughter duo, who have been working together to build an amazing business. Uh, welcome, Maria and Teresa. We are so excited to talk to you, and this is the season where people are buying gifts, sending gifts, and you guys are perfectly poised for that. So tell me the story uh, of how you started working together and what you're doing. Yeah, okay, so well, what we're doing now is we've just recently in the last few weeks launched the Letterbox Gift Company, which is an online marketplace for small businesses. Um, so that it's, you know, a bit like other online marketplaces, you know, where everyone has like an individual shop and they can list their gifts. And the, the thing is they have to all be gifts that are letterbox size, but also with like an eco-conscious approach. So like recyclable packaging, like just no single use plastics, that kind of thing. Um, and they have to be a, a small business, like startup, you know, really little, just like us. <laughs> so, but it started, we started working together. Um, so if you go back to the beginning, mm. right to the beginning, I started making cakes. I, I, well, I've always made cakes. I've always enjoyed making them for like friends and family, like for birthdays and stuff. Um, and I would do it a lot. And then family would say, oh, you know, you should you should start selling these. So I started with that a while, quite a while ago, just doing selling cakes on the side on Facebook and stuff. Um, and then that evolved into, in 2018, that evolved into Letterbox Brownies because the idea was I wanted to kind of reach further afield. So I'd get inquiries for cakes, but they were too far away. So I thought, oh, it'd be nice to kind of come up with something that can that isn't just in the local area. So mm. I started Letterbox Brownies and ever since 2018, it kind of is it from 2018 to 2019, it kind of slowly grew. The cakes was still more of the main focus, but then it got bigger and bigger. <coughs> and yeah. there was times when we'd get, you know, like um corporate orders, and that's when mum really first start, started getting roped yeah. in. Yeah. Because it would just be like too much for one person. So yeah. mum and dad and my brother and his girlfriend would all <laughs> get roped in to help me. But um in the end of 2019, yeah. You you kind well, of yeah the end of 2019 it, it thought leading up to Christmas then it start it did start to get even busier and we were doing a lot more because Teresa lives at home um, and uh, so I was in a four days a week job um, and I just thought you know what she's uh, she really needs help um, she can't do this on her own and uh, we can't really employ anyone and um, so I thought and my job I enjoyed my job but you know, I'm not young anymore. I was getting towards retirement age. And I'm thinking, well, it's weird because I, I said to myself, I want to slow down a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, the job that I was doing was going to kind of develop into a, from four days to five days to maybe even more than that. So I thought, do you know what, I'll, I'll just, I'll leave and I'll give it a go. I'll kind of join Teresa and we'll give it a year. We'll see how long, you know, how it goes. Because I was doing um, school uh, governor clerking um, and governance support. So I thought I can always do that on the side and do a bit of freelance and that. Um, and then, and I was due to start with her on in uh, March, April of uh, 2020. <laughs> and of course, that's when the pandemic hit. And uh, without really uh, any effort, yeah, in terms of just, just like promotion or marketing or anything, the, the Letterbox Brownies just yeah. did, did rock it. You know, it, it kind of, we were so busy and it was, so it was really lucky that I was actually with her and uh, yeah. could give my full time to, to doing that. Yeah. So that's how it all, that's <laughs> how the Brownies all um, started. And then, and then, and then you started thinking yeah. about a gift company. Jan in January mm. this year, I kind of started thinking of, of ways to, kind of expand it because I'd had ideas of maybe doing like collaboration boxes with other people and like doing brownies and tea or brownies and something else and I'd mm. given them a few tries but they didn't necessarily like go to plan or go quite well and then I thought well maybe an easier way to do it and give other people a bit more like freedom as well is to create like a, a little marketplace where they can just you know control their own shop and sell 
sell their stuff directly and mm. with the idea that maybe like hopefully in, I think beginning of next year I want to start doing collaboration boxes but um mm. but for now it's just uh, each person has their own shop so yeah yeah and and it was um the the kind of the letterbox gift market did get quite saturated um and still is quite saturated but um we and and the likes of etsy and uh, not on the high street you, you know they are so huge and, and well known yeah and and so we wanted to kind of try and get a marketplace that was a bit smaller um and and you want eventually your idea was to build up a, a community and uh, and we could having gone through all the with the brownies always making sure that they were the packaging was recyclable um, and sustainable and all that we thought we can help newer companies that are starting up if they because when you start it's not always easy to to be you know mm. eco-conscious because it's so expensive at times and you um, might not know where to where to yeah, look yeah. again there's so many different things yeah. out there it's kind of yeah, it's hard to know where to start sometimes. Yeah, so um, not that we're experts or no, anything. No, it's just like you know. Well, you... I mean, you you are further along than a lot of people are when they're first starting that journey. You've already done the starting phase. You understand what that's like, and you can guide people along that. And I think, yeah. you know, I mean, I had a mentor who said you only have to be ten percent ahead of the people that you're serving in terms of if you're helping other people get started. If you're ahead of them in the game, you know more than they do, and you can help them get further along than they could on their own. And that's such a yeah. true statement. And I see that happening at Tech Pixies all the time. Now, what I'm curious about is which one of you found Tech Pixies? I think it was Maria, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was me. It was me. <laughs> and and you've and how have you leveraged um, Tech Pixies to help with the two businesses? Well, um, yeah, I found Tech Pixies. I did the, the boot camp um, challenge. And, um, I have to say, I didn't quite managed to do all the challenges during that time um but i kind of got a lot out of it and i thought this is some and because for me i i'm not you know i was i knew instagram i knew facebook um but i didn't use them a lot and um I, but i could see that they would be really useful at all this kind of social media channels tech you know in terms of website and that to um help the business um so that's when I sort of joined, had a very great conversation with you, Joy, uh, before joining. And um, that kind of, uh, you were so nice, so lovely, so supportive. And I just thought, yep, this is this is a great, and, and of course the face of the community while we were doing the challenge was fantastic. So I thought, great. So, um, so we've kind of learned from the, the mo all the you know the modules the um the Instagram the Facebook on and things that we even you didn't know before um, oh yeah no I wasn't yeah. I wouldn't you know I knew how to use Instagram and Facebook but I didn't I didn't use them very often you no. know my personal account I hardly ever use and then the business one you know I would be just posting because I thought mm. oh I suppose I should post something mm. whereas now I'm a, we're we're a bit we're getting better at it and we know yeah. a lot more yeah that's useful so that's it's been yeah. really good for, for learning and, it, and it was really learning about you know not just to be salesy all the time um that was one of the things we sort of i just took away um are still taking away and still trying to work on because it's that thing about you know you're in throw off your invisibility cloak get out there but you know, i mean today is like quite nerve-wracking <laughs> for me um because I'm not used to this and, and even truly, I mean, you know, we've been to sort of join networking groups and that. And so you kind of, we've done a lot of face-to-face -face networking and Zoom networking, um, mm. but it's quite different to putting your face out there on social media. And and um, we haven't done any lives And yet. we still <laughs> haven't done any lives. We haven't done any reels. We Well, you're doing a live right now. So those yeah. of you who are listening on replay, this was filmed live and we, uh, we film it live every Friday when we do our lives, they're on Facebook, on LinkedIn, also on YouTube. And at the moment, we're in the middle of a series of interviewing people who have set up small businesses who sell products because this is the season to be buying products for your friends and family for Christmas. And yeah. uh, and and we we have some amazing interviews coming up, and we've been doing some amazing interviews already. And I just I want to celebrate 
small business and, and really raise awareness about what you've done. And even if you're not yet coming uh, onto lives and not yet putting your face out onto the to the mm-hmm. feeds, which I'm starting to see you do, which is great. You know, I always say people buy from people. And when they can connect with the, the, the person behind the business, uh, you know, Maria, it was like you said, you spoke to me and you knew that it was right. And so you moved forward. And it's like, if I had hid, you know, behind everything, mm-hmm. never spoke to you, you might, you might not have chosen to, to come on board. And I think that's the, the important lesson here is, you know, telling your story. And that's what I wanted to do was get the two of you on to talk about your story, how you got started. It's such a wonderful story. And, you yeah. know, um, the shirt I'm wearing here, the stronger than ever shirt, that's from Palm to Dilly Palm. And it's a sister duo that set up that company. And, you know, they, they have stars on all of their clothes, which is why I love it. And they're, they're the same like you guys. They, they had an idea. They got started. And now it's getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, they've even given us a wonderful discount. So Technixies 10, if you go to Palm Tiddly Palm, you can get any, you know, you can get a discount there when you get stuff from them. And this is what I love is celebrating these amazing companies that are coming out of, many of them coming out of the lockdown, uh, like yours has expanded with the lockdown. But also what I love is you're ta- you're not just taking this idea about the brownies and running with that, but you're expanding it to help other people create a life they would love doing something that they love. And that's that's what I really think is incredible. Um, and also, you know, I know there's been a huge learning curve, not just for social media, but also for the tech side and building out the websites and, you know, creating the partnerships and all that stuff. What are some of the lessons that you've learned uh, and, and has it been worth it? I think that's the, the question I always like to ask. You know, when people chase a dream, uh, there's always someone who's listening to this podcast who's got an idea in their head and they're thinking, gosh, that's a really good idea. Or I might have even had that idea, but they didn't act on it. So mm-hmm. what, what, some of, what are some of your reflections on, you know, taking a, taking a dream from an idea that's in your head bringing it out into form and creating it into reality, but actually living that dream. And, and is it worth it? Has it been worth it? And what are some of the key lessons you've learned from that? Well, I mean, the Letterbox Gift Company is very new because we only launched it um, this month, earlier this month. So um, but it was a long time in the planning. And, um, but also the website, it's, you kind of, Teresa was really the one that kind of concentrated on building the gift, gift company, building the website with our, our um, uh, developer. developer. Yeah. Um, and and I tried to concentrate on keeping the brownies. Um, I sort of kept up with all the, the brownie orders and keeping the brownie cycle. But also, you, con- you like, while I was kind of doing that, you, yeah. you were both, but you were doing a lot of like contact finding. Yeah, I was. I, I spent ages on on Instagram going finding all these different um, uh, companies, um, and I would and often you would find one, and then you would um, look at the comments, and you'd see um, another company, and I thought, oh, I'll have a look at them, and it was just really great finding out about all these different companies. And I have to say, one thing I did learn there was that the the people I got interested in and thought, yeah, I'll, I'll come get in touch with them, were the ones who I could, who had an about us, who had a story um, behind their, you know, a lot of the the um, accounts were maybe just selling, you know, they were sort of had a product and they might not even write something on there. They'd have a photograph and they just, this is it, you know, and just, it was all salesy. And that was one of the things that, um, when we were talking to some of the other tech pixies, because we, at one point when we were doing the gift company, uh, setting up the gift company, we thought, we can't do all this. So we kind of um, put a, a message out to say, we need some social media help, you know, because although we're learning it and we're doing it, but it's time. So, um, and then, and one of them, uh, we didn't go with that because we just realized that we we didn't have the money to, to do it. Um, but one of them said, had a look at our um, account and said, it's a bit too, you need to mix it up a bit. It's a bit too salesy. Um, you need to get your story out there, which we've been hearing anyway. Um, <laughs> but um, that kind of proved the point of being, you need to tell a story. You need to let people know about you. Um, because, and particularly with brownies, with, with letterbox gifts, 
there is so many out there. So you have to stand out. We're still working out how we're going to stand out. <laughs> um, well, apart from the fact that you have amazing brownies <laughs> and you sent me some samples and they did not even last long enough for me to make a reel or anything. We just <laughs> ate them all. They were so good. And I think, yeah. you know, I think that's also part of it. A good product that people love, um, good customer yeah. service uh, and a yeah. great community. You know, those those things go a very, very, very long way. And yeah. uh, and I think that's something that I've definitely learned, um, you know, and, and, and you're right. You, if if you if you sell all the time and you're not building up the community and serving the community that you've already sold to. Um, it, it, it does damage the brand and, but you do it in clever ways, you know, you do it in clever ways and you introduce things to your audience that might be a good fit for them. And like you said, you have very specific criteria. I mean, at Tech, at Tech Pixies, I will never recommend or endorse a program that someone could do after us unless either I have done it myself and seen a return on investment, mm -hmm. or it's a student of ours who's, who's really got a specialty in something. And, you know, and I think that that's important, you know, because people trust you to guide them. Uh, and I think that's also why some of these other ones that have been very successful, that's why they've been successful, because they have stuck to their guns with their criteria and they've they've had good customer service and, yeah. you know, they tell a great story. And I think there's their stories are so good. Um, and actually, speaking of which, so what, what, where's the love of brownies come from? I mean, I know that's not the, you know, that was the starting point, but, but what's the story behind the brownies? So I mentioned a little bit briefly earlier, it was, um, mm. I, I was making cakes and I wanted to kind of find a way to reach, to be able to kind of send baked goods a bit further afield. And obviously I can't, you can't send like a fully decorated cake in the post. In 2018, like I did my research and I had a look around and to see if anyone else was really doing it. And compared to now, there was there was hardly any anybody. Mm -hmm. I found a few in the in America, um, who just obviously shipped to America, and then I found one or mm -hmm. two here. But I thought, oh well, that's something I could do. Like brownies, are, I know that brownies are like good and stable, and like they'll make they'll last the journey. Like you know, they and they last longer than cake. So you know, they'll by the time they've travelled a day or two, they'll still be absolutely fine. And everybody loves a brownie. Well, yeah, most, just, most people love. A brownie. You know, we love brownie, and, to be, and that's the thing. I I think it was for a Mother's Day when I was just doing cakes. I did brownie trays, like personalised brownie trays, and people who who had bought them, you know, like oh wow, they were like they were so nice, like really fudgy and like just delicious. So I was like, oh, okay, well I'm good at making brownies then. <laughs> um, so I thought that's something good that can be sent. Um, yeah. And at the time I was like part of a networking group um, and like you, each week you get to kind of, you know, talk about your business. So I thought, well, let me kind of pitch the idea to this room full of people who will tell me whether or not they think it's a good idea. And I did it and they were all like, that's a great idea. Like mm. we'll, we'll buy them, we'll send them to our customers and like, you know, as thank yous and stuff. So I was like, okay, maybe we'll give it a go. Mm. Um, so I, I tried to make the website myself because I kind of I, I kind of rushed ahead and um oh no actually to be fair first of all I I did like a little mini competition just to find twenty people who wanted to sample them um and kind of send a box to and asked for feedback on like the packaging which was probably mm. one of the most helpful things we did because mm. when I first sent out those twenty boxes you know they weren't individually wrapped um or they were just wrapped in like greaseproof paper and it didn't i knew it didn't mm. look that great and but by sending them out to people they then kind of gave me feedback and it was mm. one person i wish i knew i wish i knew who it was but i can't remember mm. you know they said why don't you like individually wrap them in like tissue paper and like put like a, a label band on them to say like which flavor it is um so then that that's you obviously had have seen what they look like it's like they're individually wrapped in in our branded greaseproof paper and then have like a label band around them so you know which... and i love those label bands because you've got different colors and it you've got little um emojis on them and things so talk to us about some of the christmas flavors because there's a whole you sent me all the different flavors there's about eight different flavors how have you how have you come up with those recipes and i'm was it a lot of taste testing and to walk us through some of the names so that people know yeah. Okay. Well, the um, spiced orange and cranberry blondie, because um, that was another thing. It started with brownies, and then um, 
which is started with blondies because and getting them right oh was, yeah that took a while took quite a while because they're not easy to they're quite different they react quite differently to the to the dark chocolate because they're made with white chocolate and a um, lot of bra- uh, blondies that we had before and like like my friend for example she doesn't really like blondie because she's like, the, quite the usual texture is fairly cakey but she, you know one when, when we like perfected our blondie recipe even she was like i love your blondies because yeah. they're like fudgy and like they're more kind of yeah. like the same texture as the brownies yeah so that's and that's what we wanted yeah. we wanted to get it like yeah. the consistency of like the fudgy yeah so we've got spiced orange and cranberry um and there's there's just lots of spiced you yes. know the kind spice. of spices <laughs> mixed spice cinnamon um cloves um so there's yeah spiced orange and cranberry uh, which is my favorite i think we tried a mulled wine mm. um but uh which wasn't alcoholic it was um spiced uh, grape jam mm. and that but it didn't quite work so we mm. we didn't carry on with that the jam tasted um, nice yeah the but jam then once baked it seemed the flavor seemed to disappear so yeah we, oh interesting yeah yeah so um so then we've got a mince pie and again um yeah that one didn't last very long in my house my daughter claimed that immediately and ate that's it good. that's it, my favorite blondie yeah that's that's one. really good because it's got quite a strong um you know spice taste to it um and what else oh gingerbread yeah um which is a kind of not too gingery. No. But we find that gingerbread, you the ginger, you you eat it first and you go, hmm, it's not very gingery. And, and then, then you it go, you. oh, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, so there's spiced orange can be, uh, mince pie, gingerbread. Um, is there another blonde? Oh, million, well, millionaire shortbread blondie. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the one my husband ate immediately. <laughs> yeah. So tell me... Tell me about the tell me about the letterbox gift company and what kind of uh, small businesses are joining. I see we've got um, Nicola here today who says she's just setting up her letterbox shop. So it's lovely to see you, Nicola. Yeah. <laughs> so tell, us, tell us the kind of businesses that are coming on to sell through your letterbox gift company. Well, yeah, Nicola does her, her biscuits. Look, we haven't tasted them. I have to order some, but um, they look amazing. Um, they, they look, they, yeah, I, I have had her biscuits as well, and they are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they look, well, they certainly look amazing. Yeah, and um, so we have uh, Nicola with the biscuits, um, and then we the, the, there was a few who started off on the very first launch day with us, and that was um, uh, a company called Purple Bloom Seeds. So they do like um, got it's kind of like they support garden therapy, so they um, support garden therapy charities, and their boxes include kind of like grow your own herbs and edible flowers kit. So they have like a grow your own herbal bath tonic. Um, oh, wow. And, yeah, and a grow your own mm. Italian herbs. And they have they have about six, or I think they have six different um, products. Um, and then there is a, another uh, a lady called Sarah who does her company's Hay Up Soaps. Yeah. So yeah. she does a really mm. lovely like handmade soaps. Um, and then you can buy them just, I think you, you can buy them just as the soaps where you can do it in, she's got loads of different gift box options. Like she's done, yeah. she's put loads of options on there, which is great. Um, and then there is um, a company called the TBs, which is actually another mother daughter duo. Um, and they create luxury loose leaf tea blends. Um, and I mean, there's more I'm trying to, uh, uh, there's wild socks, wild socks. Who, yeah. Um, they donate, 30% of their um, proceeds to proceeds to uh, wild, uh, wildlife conservation charities. Yeah. Um, so and they, they have, they've got quite a, a, you know, a backstory in yeah. terms of what, how they started the business um, and now why they, they've got, they've got a couple of range of socks, haven't they? One's marine conservation and the other one is uh, Savannah, the Savannah socks. Mm. So they, um, to, um, wildlife charities like elephants and um, yeah all of them but um i mean there's uh, obviously yeah. I, don't wanna, I know i don't want to take up too much no. time but <laughs> the other ones are the pink zebra she does like junk journals which are really cool yeah, yeah. um the gift pa does like curated gift boxes wellness, um sweet kind of wellness sweet ones. pea they've recently come on board and that's like a sewing embroidery kits yeah that's yeah. amazing. Well, now we do know that if you want to get your hands on some of the brownies, that you can enter the Fab Box giveaway. So the Fab Box giveaway is available until the 10th of December. So if you go to techpixies.com forward slash giveaway, 
you can enter the giveaway. And in this giveaway will be stuff from Palm Tiddly Palm. I think we've got earrings and running headbands. We've also got your brownies uh, and quite a few other amazing treats in there. Um, the normal Tech Pixies Fab Box stuff, which includes our highlighter and our uh, candle and all, you know, the, the snug and everything else. So definitely yes. a, and a star scarf, everything else. So if uh, if you guys uh, you'll be you'll be going in there as well, which I'm so excited about. So if anyone hasn't entered yet, they've got until the 10th of December to mm -hmm. enter. Uh, and then they can taste your brownies. But also, apparently, it sounds like uh, among all the other amazing things you sell uh, at the, the Letterbox Gift Company, you've also got an awesome brownie advent calendar. Yeah. yeah. Tell us about that. Well, so that know, was kind of a new idea, just what we try it out this year. Um, I don't think it's actually on the website anymore. I, I removed it this morning just because we have to send the first one out tomorrow. So it's... Um, mm -hmm. But we've sold a few of them, which is which is good. I, you know, I actually just thought if we sell one, that'd be great because it's, it's brand new. Um, so we've sold a few of them. And they're basically sent out in two different boxes, um, uh, to obviously, to keep them fresher for longer. So we send out the first one tomorrow. That will see you through from the 1st to the 14th. And it's our snack size options. And they're wrapped in their usual paper, so you'll know which flavor's which. But then they're also just wrapped in a bit of eco-friendly Christmas paper when this in the when the second box gets sent out there's more snack size but in the three days yeah the last three days are two are bigger ones and then the last one is a big, big one, one for Christmas Eve so big special Christmas oh, Eve. oh wow mm -hmm. well mm -hmm. I have to say I love what you're doing and I love that you're part of our community uh it's really wonderful to see people chase a dream you know it not just not just have a dream but to blueprint it, to design it, to build it, to launch it, you know, you've done all of that. And, you it's know, not easy. it's yeah. not easy to <laughs> <wait> though. It's <laughs> but, well, no, but one, no one said following your dreams was easy, but is it worth it? Is it yeah. worth it? Well, that's insane. And that's what's been great about the Tech Pixie community and being part of Tech Pixies as well is that, is that all the life coaching calls, all the support yeah. you get in the group and the kind of people have their own stories and you can hear from how they've got on and, and it's all about, you know, you having faith in yourself mm. and just keep going because there are times and there have been times <laughs> in the last few yeah. weeks where we've just both been <gasps> just yeah. completely deflated. And uh, and then you just think, nope, just yeah. we, got, we can't just just do nothing we've got to keep going and and i say the tech pixies is and you found that i yeah the I, I think i find the life coaching like the most kind of Teresa is amazing yeah, yeah. she's great yeah. like i just love her sessions like if i'm ever yeah. feeling a bit kind of like oh like underwhelmed or deflated or not motivated i feel like when i listen to one of those i feel a lot more confident mm. and and also actually the the session the workshop that you did last week oh, i love that i thought i thought that was great Oh, I'm getting your first your first customer or your first social media client. <laughs> What's that? What? With, oh, no, vision, oh no, sorry, vision, vision workshop. workshop. Oh, the vision workshop. Oh yeah, no, we oh, yeah. that went really well. In fact, we're going to run another vision workshop. I'm not sure if it's going to be in December or if it's going to be in January, but mm. definitely we're going to be running those once a month because they were massively impactful. And you know, you can come back and do it again and again and again and just clarify that vision and get get really clear on it. Yeah, I mean. Tech Pixies is not just about the social media. We've always said that. Uh, mm -hmm. It is about the the mindset as well, the shifts you need to make in order to be successful, not just in social media, but in life. You know, the things you need to do to, you know, a lot of people have, especially women, they, they just, and, and I don't want to pigeonhole, but we as women, we often come from a caring role. We often come from a role where we're looking after everybody else and we're not really, um, we don't really feel like we can, you know, we're worthy of charging for our time or that we deserve to be paid because uh, generationally, and we're not talking about like decades or, you know, centuries, we're talking about millennia of women not earning and not being, you know, not, not owning their own businesses, properties, bank accounts. I mean, it's been only in the last 50 years that women even can have their own bank accounts, right? So there's, we're making tremendous progress in a short period of time, but you're talking about generational 
you know, things that we need to change. And, and from an epigenetics perspective, it we have to change it. This has to be the generation that changes it. We change our mindset. The children after us then benefit from that. And I think uh, that's what we've been doing at Tech Pixies is a lot of that subconscious reprogramming, a lot of, you know, really getting clear on the vision, really getting um, clear on the next step and also understanding, understanding the underlying universal laws that affect the way that we move forward or don't move forward, right? And mm -hmm. the things that work within the subconscious that prevent us from moving forwards and how we can consciously change that. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, this, this powerful combination of neuro coaching, life coaching, vision building, dream building, all of this together, uh, once you've got that in line, getting the skills is that's the that's the magic combination, you know, to then take your tech skills and make it become a reality. And I just I love that you have um, pursued this and that you've continued to move forward with it. And I love the family aspect to it. And I also love the heart. You know, it, you you really very carefully picked who's in your who's in your um, gift company. And I think that's going to serve you so, so well in the future. I want to thank you both for coming on board, uh, going on and doing your first live. Uh, so, um, we, Lisa's here today. She says, really brave to do your first live today. You sound confident. And uh, Becky also wants to acknowledge you for thinking about packaging at the front end rather than just as an afterthought. Um, and mm -hmm. we've had some lovely ladies join us. Uh, Harpreet and uh, and also Christina, who's now wishing she could have bought a brownie advent calendar <laughs> retrospectively. So Christina, you'll have to wait till next year, but I do hope you will do your advent box well, next year. Put it we, back on the website. We, we might do a part two because it comes in two section, you know, two parts. So we might do a kind of the, the second twelve days. You know, yeah. Sort of. I, I the twelve. Yes, I think that's a great idea. It's like the twelve days of Christmas. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we'll we do might it. do that. We'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll I think do you it. should do that. I think you should do that. Yeah. Well, as a reminder, uh, for those of you who haven't entered the, the giveaway yet, you've got until the 10th of December to enter. I think we've got almost 250 entries already, uh, and we're giving away five boxes. So there's a really good chance that you're going to get a box if you enter. And, mm. uh, and of course, you get to try the brownies that way. But also, where can people find you if they would love to get their hands on some brownies or some other gifts for Christmas? So it's um, you can find us at www.theletterboxgiftcompany.co.uk. And the brownies in particular, if you go to shop and then buy sellers, you'll see all the, all the companies. Um, and then Letterbox Brownies, you'll see them there and you'll find our shop. But there's yeah. lots of, there's, you can have a look at all the different sellers. But there are a lot, you just have to be careful because there are a lot of Letterbox gift uh, companies out there. So that is the, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. That's fun. <laughs> Hello, letterboxgiftcompany.co.uk. And that is where you will find all of these amazing gifts. Yeah. Thank you, ladies, so Thank much. You. Thank you so Such much. Such a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah, it's been thank a pleasure. You so much. First live. <laughs> yeah. We well done. You survived your first live. Maybe that's what we should have is some kind of a, like, uh, if Lisa's still watching, we should have a survived my first live badge yeah. or something like that. <laughs> that's, that's a good idea. idea. <laughs> Thanks.